So sad news in the world of perfumery, the passing of master perfumer over at Givaudan, Olivier Peshaw. Today I'm going to talk to you about him, his fragrances, and do a rank list of my favorites from his creation. So if you're curious to learn about Olivier Peshaw's fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, Olivier Pesho has died at the age of 57. He was a perfumer I discovered first for the first time, I believe in the late part of the 2010s with diptyque fragrances. And he's created a ton of dif dip different dip diptyque fragrances. And I've got those here in this video today, but I didn't really start digging into like, you know, really appreciating his fragrances until I discovered Herod by Parfums of Marley, one of my favorite fragrances from Parfums of Marley and also one of my favorite tobacco fragrances. So he died recently. I'm going to read you a little bit of an article here and I'll have the article linked as well. Givaudan master perfumer Olivier Peshaw has passed away on July 10, 2023. The following words are penned by the Givaudan team. It is with deep sadness and profound emotion that Givaudan announces the passing of Olivier Peshaw on July 10, 2023 in Paris, France at the age of 57 after fighting against a long disease. Born in Paris in 1966 and graduated from Asipka, Olivier started his career in 1990 by joining Payan Bertrand in Bangkok. On his return to Paris in 1992, he placed his talent to the service of perfume house Anique Goutal before transitioning to Cow Corporation in 1993. He joined Givaudan in 1998, returning in 2006 after a brief period at Quest International. Well known for his elegant and luminous olfactive writing, Olivier has been at the origin of countless successes such as Omoheli by Diptyque, Herod by Parfums de Marly, and Explorer by Mont Blanc. His endless talent and creative versatility led him to be elevated to the rank of master perfumer. So yes, he's created quite a bit of uh, fragrances and uh, he's got a huge catalog and I've got pretty good collection of creations by him. As I said, a lot of them are from Diptyque, but there's other fragrances here. Some of his other well-known fragrances and or brands, well-known brands he's worked for are fragrances for Ex Nihilo with Amber Sky, Midnight Special, and an Oud Attar or Oil, Fragrance Dubois, Oud Vert Intense, and Moschino fragrances such as Toy 2 Bubblegum, Paco Rabanne 1 million, which is very, very popular. So a large variety of fragrances, his creations will be missed for sure. Yeah, so I discovered his creations for the first time at Diptyque with a fragrance called Loda Neroli, and then also 34 Boulevard Saint Germain. And then Herod was the big fragrance that I started looking up his name. And then of course, uh, you know, researched his creations and so forth. So let's go ahead and get started with the ranked list of fragrances from Olivier Peshaw with the first fragrance. Uh, going to Diptyque and it's Loda Neroli, this one right here. I still have my very first original bottle bought back in 2008 or 2009. This launched in 2008. This is one of two Orange Blossom Neroli focused fragrances from Diptyque. And the bottle has changed now. It no longer is in this bottle. This was a decantable bottle. But to this day, it still smells great. I've kept it in a cool, dark, dry place. It's Neroli citruses with orange blossom, bergamot, lemon verbena, pettigran, tarragon. Really, really beautiful fragrance. There's also some geranium here, some beeswax, white musk, and cedar. So it's fresh and very, very citrusy. Not only have the citruses, the juiciness of the citruses, and also loads of floral touches here as well. Lo de Neroli from Diptyque. Moving on to the house of Comte de Garçon. This is standard, this one right here. Very interesting, clean fragrance for me and a typical style of Comte de Garçon fragrances. This is cedar with watercress, fennel, lemon, ginger, musk, saffron, tea, and honeysuckle. For me, there's also the idea of a bit of like smoky, incense -y woodiness running throughout this one. Maybe a bit of resinous touch, but it's very clean and very kind of minimalistic as well and also green with the herbs and aromatics. So standard from Comme des Garçons is a wonderful offering from that house. If you don't know it, uh, do check it out. This next fragrance is from the house of Diptyque. This is the second fragrance that I learned of this perfumer, Olivier Peshaw. This is 34 Boulevard Saint Germain. This is uh, the cap right here, which has the name on it. Let's go this way. 
So there's uh, several different version, uh, versions of this fragrance. Uh, one missing called Homage, which I wish I can get my hands on, which came in this bottle, not the redo. But for me, this one was, they were mentioning how at Diptyque Boutique here, how this is taking a lot of different Diptyque fragrances or ingredients and notes from different Diptyque fragrances and combining it to create this very ambery fragrance with spices and aromatics and resins and things like that. So there's loads of spices like cloves and cinnamon, there's black currant, cardamom, fig leaves, geranium, pink pepper, resins, woods, eucalyptus. It wears very ambery, but it is an eau de toilette, but really great smell. It definitely pays tribute to Diptyque, and that's why they've uh, named it after their address, 34 Boulevard St. Germain. I believe that's their flagship store, and that's the address of their first store, I believe, or their flagship store in Paris. But moving on to Parfums de Marly, this is Herod, this one right here. Still to this day, I really enjoy Herod. It's my favorite Parfums de Marly fragrance and one of my favorite tobacco fragrances. I love the vanilla touches and light fruity touches from the Osmanthus here, and there's also spiciness from cinnamon, and of course there's incense, pepper, vetiver, and lavender, so it creates an ambery touch as well. Really great fragrance. It's not a beastly fragrance, but it really, really smells pretty delicious with uh, this fragrance. This is Herod from Parfums de Marly, a great, great Olivier uh, Peychaud creation, which I still love to this day, just like I discovered it like almost 10 years ago. So next uh, is one of the fragrances that was mentioned in the article I just read. It's Omoheli from Diptyque, a very tropical solar fragrance with Ilang Ilang, launched in 2013. And also, if you haven't noticed, I'm doing the video ranking with the date. So the earliest fragrance I spoke about is the first fragrance that I have in the collection. And then the oldest one will be the la latest launches. But Omoheli is quite tropical and beautiful. And it's with Ilang Ylang, pink pepper, ginger, vetiver. There's also some floral notes and eventually it gets to be a little earthy and also a bit ambery on its dry down. It's quite nice though. It's, it smells great. If you like the idea of a solar floral fragrance, kind of beachy, tropical, definitely try Omoheli from the House of Diptyque. It's quite wonderful and I recently featured that in a video of solar fragrances. If you uh, haven't caught that video, go catch it. But there are some discontinued fragrances on this list. But I'm highlighting, as I said, this perfumer, Olivier Pachot, and his creations throughout the years. Some are not discontinued, some are. This next one is discontinued. It's from the House of Armani. This is Mir Imperial, this one right here. This one's really sought after. People really tend to like this one, and I don't know why it's discontinued. Perhaps it wasn't selling, but it has a cult following and things like that. The name is Mir Imperial, and it focuses on the myrrh note, so it's very resinous and ambery, a bit balsamic as well. So it's myrrh, benzoin, there's amber, there's vanilla, there's some saffron on here for a bit of spicy aromatic leather touches and then of course some spiciness from pink pepper. It's a gorgeous fragrance. It's probably an acquired taste but it really does smell great. Paying tribute to myrrh but also benzoin here so it's quite resinous and ambery from the House of Armani. This next one is one of my all-time favorite creations from Olivier Pechot, also launched in the, well, no, it didn't launch in the 2013, it launched in 2015. This is uh, Diptyque's Benjoin Bohème, this one right here. But uh, similar idea, sort of, with the Mir Imperial, this is Benjoin Bohème, whereas with Mir Imperial, they're focusing on myrrh. With Benjoin Bohème, they're focusing on benzoin. So it's benzoin with Peru balsam. There's labdanum in here. There's some patchouli and some spices. It smells freaking fantastic. Probably one of my all-time favorite benzoin benzoin fragrances. If you like amber, if you like resins, definitely try this one. With a gorgeous bottle, but I believe very soon we'll see this moving into Diptyque's uh, darker uh, bottles with the gold labels on the front, which kind of makes sense because that collection had a lot of different bottles and uh, Homage had moved in there, a different version of Homage but um, they discontinued everything and they left a Benjoin Bohème and now they're moving it into the collection uh, that's uh, the black bottles in the Eau de Parfums. This next fragrance, it's a great, great creation. Wonderful, wonderful creation. Also discontinued, sadly, if you can get your hands on it, definitely get it because I quite like it. And also, if you like classic fragrances, you're going to like this one because it's taking Azaro Por Homme from 1978 and modernizing it, but still keeping its classic touches here. This is Azaro Por Homme 
Intense from 2015. So basically what you have with the original smell here, they've added some spices and also some boozy touches. So it's a really, really great take on that fragrance and it smells super, super fantastic. It's cinnamon with brandy, there's amber, there's tonka beans, and also some feta verse. So you do have the touches, the classic touches of the aromatic fougere style that the fragrance is, but it's definitely amped up with loads of spices, cinnamon, and then also the brandy here. So it's super, super boozy and super delicious. So Azzaro Por Om Intense, a great, great release from uh, Azzaro, but also created by Olivier Peshaw. Then we're moving on to the house of Sisley. This is Soir de Orient, this one right here. This is a great, beautiful Chypre fragrance. It's a dark rose fragrance, and it features rose, incense, saffron, galbanum, geranium, patchouli, and sandalwood from a very underrated house. This house doesn't get a lot of love, and they have some great, great fragrances, really, really wonderful fragrances, and I think they're very, very underrated. I kind of categorize them under the beauty category. They're not quite a designer, but they've been around since the 70s with awesome, some fragrance releases and this one's definitely kind of a green take on a very dark kind of gothic and you know smoky rose really beautiful Sparta Orient is wonderful fragrance from Sisley if you guys don't know this one do certainly check it out because I think you will really really enjoy it moving on to the house of Carolina Herrera it's burning rose I haven't spoken much about this one I only have a little bit left in my bottle this is a kind of a Middle Eastern take on rose, and even though they don't mention saffron here, I get a major saffron dosage, a bit of leatheriness as well, but a really, really beautiful take on rose. This was the first fragrance I bought from this collection, and I absolutely really love it. So it's Bulgarian rose with cinnamon, there's patchouli and ginger, and of course I'm getting a kind of a saffrony, a smoky, leathery touch from the saffron note in here as well, but uh, I don't know where that's coming from. So there's definitely something very, very Middle Eastern-esque here, and it smells super fantastic so burning rose from Carolina Herrera a wonderful creation uh, by Olivier Peshaw let me know if you've uh, sampled these fragrances so far and what you think about them the 11th fragrance I'm talking about launched in 2016 is Diptyque's Eau de Sens, this one right here so if you haven't noticed the white uh, labels and the clear bottles are all eau de toilettes and the dark bottles let me see if I can find a dark bottle here like this these are the Eau de Parfum fragrances. So this is also Orange Blossom. They don't mention Neroli here. It's only focusing on the Orange Blossom. And then also Olivier Peshaw created Lo de Neroli as well. So we've got two kind of similar styled... Come on now, focus. We've got two kind of similar style fragrances, but they go in different directions. For me, Eau de Sens goes a bit more powdery because they have a prominent angelica note in here. So it takes on a powdery, slight vegetal characteristic with the fragrance, but it's loads of orange blossom with a bitter orange note, the angelica, the juniper and patchouli. Very fresh, really, really gorgeous fragrance. Eau de Sens from Diptyque is a wonderful offering that Olivier Peshaw has created. Next, moving on to the house of Azzaro once again this is chrome pure so there are a few fragrances on this list come on now so there are a few fragrances on this list that are co-created with other perfumers this one he's created with uh, Jacques Houclier so this is kind of a take on the original Azzaro chrome but they've gone gone into a more of a pure direction which is what it's called a very clean fragrance with tonka beans there's watery notes there's mandarin orange orange blossom a bit of mate with white musk a kigala wood and a bergamot and a kigala wood comes up a lot with Givaudan perfumers and uh, of course uh, Olivia Pesho is a uh, part of or was part of Givaudan so they've used uh, he's used it here in this fragrance if you like chrome from Azzaro and you want something different it's definitely a flanker here and I don't think it smells too much like the original chrome but it does kind of like have a bit of the DNA in there but it's very clean and of course very uh, it's just got this kind of like a citrusy cleanness about it and not really astringent with the citruses there's definitely a softness and a bit of tea vibe then check out chrome pure but definitely a highlight from uh, Olivier Peshaw. Moving on to the House of Foa. This is a brand I discovered at Exxon's back in 2018 and they had told me that all of their fragrances are created by Olivier Peshaw. So I don't know what they're going to do if they're going to release any further fragrances. This is 02. Also has a name Memoir d'un Palmeray. This is it right here. 
very, very beautiful, clean, and also green fragrance that's uh, really wonderful to wear. Perfect in the heat because it's quite musky and also very, very unique smell. It really is very unusual but beautiful at the same time. So it has palm tree, it has pine tree, juniper with incense, bergamot, musk, and cedar. So a bit of uh, kind of a reminder of something like Standard, which Olivier Peshaw also created. Man, I'm having a hard time focusing here. So there we go. So they're not identical, but uh, if I was to say what kind of style it is, a kind of uh, similar to that Comme des Garcons standard fragrance. But this is a great release, one of the best from this house, and I really love it. It's not a, it's not an overwhelming fragrance. It's got the subtlety about it, but as a smell, it's super fantastic. So this is zero two from the house of Foa. Uh, if you guys know that house, let me know and what you think about it. But moving on to Diptyque once again, we're going to the first Eau de Parfum fragrance from Diptyque. This is Fleur de Peau, this one right here. This Fleur de Peau also was launched around the same time of the next fragrance by Diptyque. And he created two really, really wonderful fragrances for Diptyque that year. Maybe he's even created the third one, I can't remember. But this is a very musky, ambery, vegetal fragrance that I quite like, but also has loads of powder because it has a very prominent iris note. So it's musk, ambrette seed, iris, ambretolide, pink pepper. So there's some spice in there, but it wears beautifully and very clean and very, very musky and powdery as well. Fleur de Peau is a great, great release from uh, Diptyque. I quite like that one, but I also really love this next one. This is Tempo from uh, Diptyque, once again created by Olivier Peshaw. This is a great, great green take on patchouli. Not the chocolate cakey kind, but it's super, super sexy with patchouli. There's mate here, clary sage, pink pepper, violet leaves, bergamot. So I feel like mate has come up like at least three times in this video with three different fragrances. So perhaps Olivia Peshaw liked to use mate, but it is a really, really great fragrance. If you're kind of tired of the ambery, chocolatey, chocolate cakey patchouli, definitely try Tempo because it's definitely going into the green side, but still, very much patchouli and smells super fantastic. So Tempo from the House of Diptyque is a great, great uh, creation from uh, Olivier Peshaw for Diptyque. So during the pandemic, I discovered that H&M had these great collection of fragrances, budget fragrances created by various Givaudan perfumers. I noticed that a lot of them were created by Olivier Peshaw, so I decided to buy them, uh, plenty of them, several of them I bought during the pandemic as they were discounted to almost half price. I don't think the fragrances are around anymore, sadly, but if you can find them, get your hands on them, because I noticed that the two fragrances that I'm gonna to talk to you about here did kind of remind me of two Diptyque fragrances. So the first one is called Komoro Ilang, this one right here. These were launched in 2018, and this is the fragrance right here. And this one reminds me a little bit of uh, the fragrance uh, Omoheli from Diptyque because it's a uh, both of them are focusing on Ilang Ilang but this one has mandarin oranges pink peppercorn ginger of course with the Ilang Ilang freesia white flowers tonka beans white musks and a bit of a you know ambery benzoin dry down they do have similarities they're not quite identical but again for me it reminds me of Omoheli but a great fragrance if you like the idea of kind of a tropical beachy solar fragrance with a very prominent Ilang Ilang note. Here we go with this focus issue. Uh, definitely check this one out. I think it's definitely worth it. I believe I, these were originally selling for around $30 for each fragrance, and there was a promotion and I got them for, I think, maybe around 20 bucks. The next fragrance is Makassar Patchouli, this one right here. So Makassar Patchouli reminded me of Tempo for sure. Tempo from Diptyque. This is the bottle right here. Again, not quite identical, but uh, kind of, sort of. But uh, if you like the idea of patchouli and a budget fragrance, I don't know if you guys got your noses on these. They weren't sold at the stores. They were online specials or something, online exclusives. But uh, a great scent here with the patchouli with citruses, violet leaves, lavender, violet blossom, jasmine, woods, patchouli, dry amber, and a vanilla. Really, really great fragrance. Uh, definitely wonderful creations, but really did remind me of 
Olivier Peschel's creations for diptyques. So that's the only thing I kind of don't like about perfumers who kind of copy their own works for other brands. But uh, what are your thoughts about this scenario? Do you like the idea of a perfumer copying his own work for another store? I mean, not store, but a brand or, you know, a retailer or something like that. Let me know your thoughts. But moving on to the next fragrance at number 18, this is 34 Boulevard Saint Germain and the EDP concentration, this one right here. This I bought during the pandemic at the Diptyque store here, and I absolutely love it. It's a more concentrated take on the original, which is this, but uh, the EDP is more you know concentrated, thicker, denser, and also super sexier. Because the original, I felt like would go into a lot of different directions, and with this one, it focuses in on sandalwood, vanilla, pink pepper, and also a bit of patchouli touch here. It's got that sexy patchouli earthiness that I quite like. This one, just think about the original, but more intensified and a little more focused on specific notes. Really great creation from Olivier Peschot and uh, an underrated one uh, from this house. If you don't know it, check it out, especially if you like uh, some earthy creations uh, from that house. Moving on to the House of Essential Parfums, this is Divine Veni. This is the uh, one and only fragrance uh, that Olivier Peschot created for uh, essential parfums and for me it is a less expensive alternative for Herod this is it right here they're very similar to me then somewhat not similar but uh, they remind me of one another whereas Herod focuses a little more on tobacco this is Saint Divine Vani by essential parfums focuses a bit more on vanilla because it is after all called Divine Vani but it's benzoin with cinnamon, osmanthus, patchouli, tobacco, dried fruit, cedarwood. This is Essential Parfums vanilla fragrance but then again for, for sure it reminds me of Herod from Parfums of Marley. But either way this is Divine Vani from 2019. A wonderful offering. A few more fragrances left. This is a fragrance from 2019 launch with uh, the house of Mont Blanc and co-creation with Antoine Maison Du and also Jordi Fernandez from Givaudan. This is Explorer, this one right here. This to me is a, definitely a fragrance that does remind me of Aventus and this is uh, Mont Blanc's take on it. And it's very fresh with the uh, spices, bergamot, pink pepper, vetiver. There's also leather here with ambroxan. There's that Akigala wood, the Givaudan proprietary note, and patchouli and clary sage. If you're looking for a designer take on Aventus, a less expensive take on Aventus, definitely Explorer is the one for you. So check that one out if you haven't. And then finally, we're going to end the list with this diptyque creation called Au Capital, launched at the very end of 2019, early 2020. This came out just before the pandemic, and it's a great take on something that's a cheaper fragrance with lots of rose and patchouli and bergamot. And then, of course, it does have that light reminder of Portrait of a Lady, and they're different and this at the same, same at the same time as well. And I quite like this one. It's a beautiful take on a rose, and diptyque does do, do a lot of rosy fragrances and this is one of their greatest I feel like very spicy very rosy dry a bit a bit jammy and definitely earthy and uh, a beautiful woody fragrance so this is Au Capital from the house of Diptyque and a great great release from this house and that's the last fragrance I'm talking about I know I don't have everything created by Olivia Peshaw there's a lot of fragrances out there and let me know what your thoughts are on these fragrances and what your thoughts are on the passing of this very experienced master perfumer from uh, the house of Givaudan I shouldn't say the house of Givaudan it's probably the firm of Givaudan but uh, definitely uh, a sad day for the world of perfumery and one of my favorite perfumers so I'm glad I have to be able to do this video now highlighting the creations of Olivier Peshaw. Let me know what your thoughts are on these fragrances. Are you a fan of any of Olivier Peshaw's fragrances? Is there a fragrance that's missing out there that I did not mention today? As I said, I don't have every single creation of Olivier Peshaw's, but this is definitely a great collection, wonderful fragrances that uh, he's created. Uh, under mostly under Givaudan, I believe, where he worked at. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please put it down below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.